Now let's get into the Q&A from there. Huh, I can't see too much. Ah, okay. Tyler Durden. There's a reason I'm renting the cheap of town for the last few years. Very smart. I got to tell you, people who are renting, well, first of all, I think the rents, gonna, rents will probably go up. But uh, if you stuck on the sidelines, uh, wanted to buy a house, this would be might be the time coming into it because I'm cheap. Hope the YouTube has not crash. Nah, meme, it's mostly my internet. Uh, having some problems here. And that's it. <laughs> wow, Rob was bullish on sub. I don't blame you. I'm usually pretty bearish. I'm actually pretty realist, realistic on things that are going on. Hmm. That's a good question. What's your resolution at break, Rob? I have to think about that. I'll get back to you. Crypto Richard Ricard, Crypto Ricardo says, looking at 840 months of data, three consecutive up months signal the end of the bear market in every case. One false positive, 2001. October and November are both up. So if December is up, thoughts? I'll let you know in December. Maybe. Man, I hope I'm wrong. I mean, I think 2023 is going to be one of those like sideways crappy years, but uh, maybe it'll be awesome. I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know. And that's why I just dollar cost average and wait for some blow off tops to uh, sell a little bit. I take profits along the way, but not much. I like, I like that Coinbase isn't on that list. Yeah. <laughs> Gary, I don't know. Barry, I don't know why you make fun of Gary Gendo so much. He watches the show all the time. We should be nice. He's here to protect us harder. Jeff, you've got a great question. How is Celsius going away with the no plan after all this time? I don't know. But, uh, you know, there's some people collecting a fat paycheck. Lawyers being one, but other ones. Just, you know, all the money that we left on there, they're using it. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Opted the F out. Am I too late? If you're too late for the market, no, I think you're timing it pretty well, actually. Quite honestly, I honestly think. Um, like this market, like it's just, it's a boring market, quite honestly. I mean, th I think that's why people cover the Sam Bakeman free story so much is because it's entertaining. It doesn't really do too much for us, honestly. But um, it's just a reminder of what not to do. But to me, it's just like, this just feels like 2018 all over again. And I'm just like, no, there we go again. And then just keep, uh, just keep showing up. That's it. <laughs> Looks like a great comment section to show my guitar channel. Yeah. So Tyler says, these are older generations of legacy policymakers struggling to adapt to new tech. There needs to be either term limits or age restrictions to hold public office. Many rely heavily on staff. I personally don't think that there should be an age restriction. I think there should be a competence, competency restriction. That's for sure. But, you know, that's what happens when you vote people in. I think the people that, uh, the staff that update all the uh, congressmen and women and, and senators, that's the whole point of reaching out to your senators and congressmen in the United States and telling them why you think that regulation should be a light touch. It should just give us clarity. It should uh, allow us to understand, you know, like those forms, uh, the terms and conditions to be uh, less so uh, massive. Also, uh, to make sure that no commingling of funds go about. And that's it. And you tell them exactly why, because this is your, this is America. And we should be able to invest into what the things that we want to invest into. And that's all. If you can gamble your savings away, that's it. And of course, that will go to the staffers. Staffers will then tell congressmen and congresswomen and go from there. That's it. And of course, people say, Rob, that doesn't really work. Well, couldn't hurt, we'll say. <laughs> that one says, talk to your local position, vote, talk to your friends. You can just opt out with self-custody Bitcoin. You can self-custody it. The thing that goes into it, the question then becomes is, the exchanges that you have to deal with to get that Bitcoin and you're buying every day, that's your on-ramp. And it's better that we become a part of that conversation than the senators and congressmen come out and go, you know what? Everybody, 
this is what happened in Canada. We're going to limit you to how much you can actually spend on crypto. I forgot the number, but what if they came in and said, okay, you can only spend a thousand bucks per year on crypto on the exchanges. All right. Sorry. And like, oh, well, we can get it someplace else. You can, you can do uh, uh, the kiosks, Coinbase kiosks. Don't you think if they're going to get a license, a money transmitter license, they can limit them too? The people that will, that will really work out pretty well are the ones that can have an on-ramp to an exchange to do those things and then DeFi. It will probably just go underground and be pretty... You know what really could happen then? It would be like... This would really suck. Is if you have a limitation of the on-ramps of how much an average retail investor could do, the accredited investors, the ones that make a good amount of money, they can probably buy an unlimited amount. They'll buy your crypto. They'll sell it to you on DeFi... And they'll probably drive up the price. And that would suck. Or maybe not. I, I worry about that. Because that would be the next option. <laughs> hey, there's nice lawyers too. I've had no problems with lawyers. Just the ones that I hire. It's a big difference. Vicky. 100% free damn website. Damn dudes crypto. Exactly. Uh, Reaper Man says, I'm waiting for, I'm wanting to buy first investment property. That's pretty good. But these cut prices in crypto are delaying my buy because I just had to stack some crypto. You know, it all depends on what you want to do. Like, I mean, everybody knows my diversification portfolio. So I just feel like to diversify kind of helps things out. And of course, some people will say, no, 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 Rob, you have to concentrate. You have to concentration of, of funds to make wealth. I'm like, well... You know, some people concentrated their funds into Luna. Ask them how that worked out. Some people concentrated their funds into BlockFi. I mean, ask, them, ask them how that worked out. Voyager, Celsius, FTX. Ask them how that worked out. I don't think that's a, the, a great option here in crypto market. But I could be wrong. No, I'm not. On that one, I'm not. I'm wrong on some other things, but let's see. See, Brian, Brian's got a good point. He says, if, if everything's going to be designated as, is going, to be, is going to be designated as securities, it's going to suck for those of us who can't trade them. You can trade securities. You do it on, on uh, Robinhood all day, don't you? On stocks. And again, I'll tell you my opinion on what's going to happen. And maybe I'm wrong here. CFTC and SEC are going to work together. It's going to be a mandate. They're going to have an oversight. Agricultural, the Agricultural Commission is going to, going to take a look over the CFTC, and the SEC is going to, is going to have uh, Senate and the House overseeing them. They're going to work together. They're going to say Bitcoin's a commodity. Everything else is security. Everything that's below Bitcoin, which is everything, you're going to have to register with the SEC as a registered security. Exchanges are going to have to go in and register as a security. A lot of these products are going to collapse, which they were worthless anyhow. So good, good riddance. Then they're going to pay the fines, which the SEC is going to impose. EOS has already done this in 2019. Uh, they paid $24 million somewhere there, for a $4 billion profit. Same thing is going to happen. These products that to start to collapse into each other because they're going to consolidate the uh, labor pool, which is going to, going, to be, going to be the good developers. And the other ones are just going to collapse, and that's it. Because they can't afford to pay the fees. They can't afford to pay the fines or the registration of the SEC and the CFTC. And then what you're going to see, good projects make it out. And uh, that's it. And you're going to be able to buy those on centralized exchanges that uh, have registered with the SEC and CFTC or whatever the new acronym they come up with. So that's how I think it's going to work out. Joe Dirt says, do your response to them. Which ones? FTX, I wasn't. But uh, you're right. On Voyager and Celsius, I was. So, Joe, I don't know how, many, how long, when's the last time you were here, but uh, you were absolutely correct. I did sponsor them. I did talk about Voyager and Celsius. That is uh, absolutely the thing. The thing was, it was great until it wasn't, right? So, uh, Celsius, I called that one a little too late. Here's the timeline. There's a link in the description, and it looked like this. Here's the Celsius Voyager channel. On June 12th, I came back from Consensus. And I talked about, I learned some things. You know, Simon Yu from StormX, essentially, and a lot of other people said, there's something wrong with Celsius. We think it's going to be insolvent. I said, you know what? If you don't like it, take everything off, off Celsius. I did that on June 12th at 11 a.m. June 12th at 9 p.m., withdrawals were frozen. And I will say this. Celsius were great until it didn't. You know how many people they've liquidated in March of 2020? during the pandemic for all those loans, three. 
because they didn't get in some crazy yield Bitcoin mining nonsense yield war that they got into now. And they just made some bad mistakes, a lot of bad mistakes. So when I learned about it, you learned about it. Unfortunately, I got a lot of my crypto stuck on there. So a lot of other people. However, I learned my lesson pretty quickly because with Voyager, thank God it was a publicly traded company. On June 22nd, I figured out that they did, because uh, of their public documentation, they let out $640 million in a loan for 3O's Capital. And I said, that is ridiculous. With uncollateralized loan, take it all off. So then June 22nd, July 1st, the withdrawals were frozen. Then, of course, on June 20th, we came up with the rules. I mean, I had talked about, you know, the rules, which are, you know, take everything off exchanges here and there. But I made it concrete. Last four and a half months, that's what we've been talking about. And FTX, a lot of people were, I think, hopefully saved from listening. And that's it. So Joe Dirt, you are absolutely correct. I did talk about sales and I did talk about Voyager. And when I learned things were wrong, you learned. And I went from there. So I hope that answers everybody's question. I love talking about that. <laughs> Every time someone says that. I have to go through the same thing. And I'm sorry for everybody who's been here and have heard that same speech 50 times. All right. Charlie. And we won't get many people regulation in the future if there is other slush funds out there. That's very true. But, uh, you know, it really depends on the big money that's coming in and what they say is going to be regulation. I think Larry Fink probably has a, <laughs> has a say in that. Tyler's got a good point. Think hard about which alt you beg. And I'm not going to make it. Uh, I have, remember my, I mean, I always talk about, take it, take it with a dash of salt. Uh, a dash in 2017 when I got in was huge, never recovered. Salt, same thing. So just remember, like, if you think, you know what? I think Shiba Inu is going to the moon and it's going to be there forever. It could, but just be careful because I don't think they're all going to make it. Nothing against Shiba Inu people. I mean, I'm sure it's awesome. Hello, Dollar Master. <laughs> I'll have no choice but to become a maxi. Yuck. I don't know. I mean, Bitcoin maxis have had a pretty good year. Let's be honest. Bitcoin maxis that are able to have everything in their cold storage is probably a pretty sweet year for them. Like I told you. I told you, no one listened to me. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> It's true they did they did win this round, but I just take a look at it and say, you know, can can Bitcoin do everything? And first of all, if you look at the if you read the white paper, is that what Bitcoin was supposed to be? Was it supposed to be a store of value? Was it supposed to be digital gold? It was really just peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Nine pages, that's what it talked about. And of course, people can say how great it is, but you know, I've heard a lot of I've heard some Bitcoin maxis talk about how, you know what, it's supposed to be a store of value, but you know, if you're in a third world country, you make 400 bucks a month and Bitcoin goes down 30% in one month and you had everything in Bitcoin, is that really a good store of value? Probably not. They talk about stable coins are. Yeah. Michael says, do you have a video that explains tokenization of things and what it'll mean for the future? No, I don't, but I probably should make one. I should, I'll make one. Hey, mountain man, happy plowing. <laughs> uh, must be snowing. I'm sorry, guys. Repeat it a million times those sticks. <laughs> Eris, hey Rob, what's your favorite move to earn crypto? Just kidding. It's, uh, I mean, I used Stefan, just didn't like it. Of course, Sweatcoin, I bought a bunch, so I'm biased when I talk about things. We all know this, right? Good morning from Germany. Thomas, how was the meetup? It was good. Uh, we had a meetup yesterday here in Puerto Rico at the Smokehouse. Out to Stephen and, the, and, the, and his crew. Great time. Uh, live bands. Drank some beers, had a bunch of brisket. It was great. And uh, it was good times. I always like doing those meetups. Next time we'll do something like a little bit more low key and we'll go from there. Uh, maybe in like two or three weeks. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I miss the king of the shill and clown news. Clown news does need to come back. That's for sure. Clown news, if you're not, not familiar, it looks like this. So we answer, we do uh, like the most ridiculous, like Bitcoin's dead or something like that. And I'll put this face on and we'll do clown news. Some people say it freaks them out because they're scared of clowns, but sorry, can't please everybody. Morning from Australia. <laughs> Thanks, Becky. <laughs> uh, 
10 of the brass says, I may be, it may be annoying, Rob, but I respect you for laying it all out when people ask you about Celsius, et cetera. Look, man, you know, same thing in the military, right? When you're wrong, you got to raise your hand and say, you know, I screwed that up and that was wrong and learn from that. Because if you don't say that you learned something from what you're, you're wrong, people die. That's how it was in the military. And that's how I, I mean, they were going to die here, but I mean, if you don't come forth and say, okay, this is where we messed up and we need to go forward. I even heard Kevin O'Leary on Kitco News say he was wrong, which I was like, what? But yeah. But uh, it was interesting conversation. Uh, Reaper Man says, I hope alts lead Bitcoin this time. Usually not. Usually it starts with Bitcoin and then people get greedy and they go into the altcoins and the altcoins fail out and then everything collapses and then we just repeat again. You know what? That would be great. It'd be great if you and Peter McCormick do a podcast. I would love to have Peter McCormick on or uh, him on the show, but he's got a, <clears throat> he gets a lot of the, a lot of the, the brainiacs on, and I am not that. But I'd love to have him on my show. That'd be great. Ah, maybe I'll reach out. Do everybody do me a favor. Could you reach out to Peter McCormick and say, you should go on Digital Asset News? That'd be great. Rob, thoughts on the CFTC saying that ETH is secure now? We talked about this, and um, my thoughts are the same. Uh, everything below Bitcoin is going to be a security, and that's just it. Probably. But I could be wrong. Dar Master has the weather. It's always between 74 and 86 degrees. I met a gentleman last night, William. Um, he was living in Abu Dhabi. Now he lives here. And he talked about he was uh, the CFO. He, he was brought in when Enron collapsed. And he was brought in to uh, stabilize and bring them out of the Chapter 11. And he said, he goes, honestly, Enron was a pretty good company. He said for like 12 of their subsidiaries. But the other 3,000 that they had was just a disaster. And he said we couldn't do it. But now he's here and he's getting into crypto and I talked to him a bit. But uh, he said that he's lived in a lot of places throughout the world. And he goes, and Puerto Rico is by far the best weather he's ever experienced. And he's right. Like the ocean, when you get in the ocean, it's like tepid to warm. Uh, it's always between, always between 76 and like 84 degrees. Always. It doesn't matter how late it is, how early it is. How in the afternoon it's always that weather and it's great. I mean, if you like that kind of weather, this is it. Um, so yeah, did I answer? Did I even answer the question? I guess I did. Okay, Darren Wilkes says, Rob, you think you'll make as much money in the next bull run as you made in the last? I probably will make more if we have another year or so to accumulate. I know you'll have a more disciplined exit strategy. Yes, I am planning on making way more this time. But right now, I am spending way less because I'm micro DCing. I still think we have a lot of problems to solve. And I, I, I did a post, and uh, let's see, this morning, where did I put it? I said there's really three things. There's really three. It's right here. There's three things that concern me that we need to get out. And I, I called it the CRR, contagion, regulation, and rates. If we can put a handle on those, we'll go to our next bull run. Contagion, you know, the thing that we talked about here with, with SBF, if we can get out of this and figure out which all the companies that are collapsing, great, then we can move forward. And then, of course, uh, the rates or the regulation, which we talked about today, the CFTC and the things that are going on, the inaction, and I think that's going to come and that's how it has to be. And the rates, which is, um, you know, Jerome Powell coming out and saying, hey, we're going to slow down the rates, but we're going to keep raising them. I think that's getting under control because the inflation is going down and the economy is slowing a little bit. Just an unemployment has to go up, unfortunately. But if we get those things done, then uh, then then I'll start I'll start uh, DCing a little bit more. So to answer your question again, I think I'll make more money in this one, uh, more more gains, I guess. But I'm really getting a lot more pickier on the, the products that I want to endorse and, and no exchanges, but just the products that, that actually do stuff, you know, that actually have real u utility. And we talked about this yesterday. So I can, I'll ask you guys again, what do you use Bit, or what not Bitcoin? What do you use Bitcoin for? And what do you use crypto for right now is like real utility. And don't tell me like I, like I do that. I buy I buy Ethereum so I can buy 
a picture of a dead cat as an NFT and sell it for more. That's not utility. Like, what do you use it for? I'm trying to get into the actual ones that actually do have real stuff, that do real things. Kitco News. Yes, K-I-T-K-O. Uh, Charkan says, will we have another major dump before the next rally? I'm not a TA person, but uh, it's, it's, it stands to reason that we'll probably have another another dump before we take off. But it's okay because guess what? Um, you'll have money opportunities to invest and uh, nothing goes up like a rocket ship. I mean, there's a point, but that's not it. I think we're going to see a lot of peaks and valleys. Good night, Reaper Man. People can't admit they're wrong. How can you believe anything they say? <laughs> I don't know. Some people, you know, are just like, I don't really care. I follow, yeah, do you follow Jason Bazzino? Would you like to have him on show? We've, he's been on my show a while back. I should reach out to Jason again. Nice guy, real smart. There's a lot of trading. And uh, yeah, what I should have is, uh, this would be a great one, Jason and, uh, and Tom Crown. That'd be a good one. Peter McCormick is not the kid from the Brady Bunch. Big guy. Thick accent. <laughs> Porto Rico. Porto Rico. Uh, ETH always, so Trudeau says, ETH was always qualified as security. ADA might be immune. They have proven decentralization and did an ICO in America. That'd be tough to say. I, To me, honestly, like, does anybody really care if it's, I mean, if it's, a, if it's a commodity, it's just easier to trade and, and uh, people who don't want to wait, that will take off. Wouldn't it be crazy if you'd have like Bitcoin as a commodity and, a, and then like some like little known token that nobody talks about or coin that nobody talks about. And they say, that's also a commodity. Oh, that'd be crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, if everything's going to be a security except Bitcoin, what do you think is going to happen with Bitcoin dominance? To the f people are going to pile in there. And that's why that's Bitcoin's the only crypto right now that I buy every day. Every single day, I buy a little Bitcoin. Not much, but every single day. Everything is a lie. It's probably true. <laughs> the ocean in Puerto Rico is so warm, you sweat when you swim. Pretty much. Don't expect to cool off here. Team Salty, do you think Bitcoin can go below 50? Absolutely. Will it? Good question. Not for sure. Uh, Cass is, I think, 13.6 at the bottom. I don't know. I, I never have called the bottom or tops. I'm just not good at that. Oh, yeah. Ben, ben was on Altcoin Daily. He said he's having his fourth kid this month. Amazing. How does that guy find the time, huh? His wife must be working. Uh, yeah, I like Tom Crown. <laughs> I buy Verge to temper my opium. That's pretty good. And CTO Larson. Oh, CTO Larson on the show two or three times, matter of fact. He's an interesting character. I like him. Uh, Polkadot is a software. Let's go look at it, actually. Thank you. Hit the like on the way out. Ugh. BitBoy. BitBoy versus Dan live on the show. I don't... BitBoy is more of a... is a personality. He's more of, you know... And he's entertaining. So... And he puts out... And he puts out some information. And I will say this. I mean, one thing about BitBoy, he did come out and say he was sorry for the shilling and things in the past, so... Hey, step in the right direction. Hey, I only get paid once a week. Oh, I remember those days. <laughs> ben has more kids than shares. Uh, let's see. Willie Wu says we're close to the bottom. Uh, yeah, Willie Wu. You know, he's right all the time, too. I think that's it. Uh, I think so. 
Oh, yeah. And I'll leave with this. Uh, looking for cash says, I'll leave with this. This is a good question. Rob, how you buying your crypto? Binance or decentralized exchange? I need an on-ramp, so I use Coinbase. And uh, Coinbase has, I just set it up as DCA. It buys Bitcoin every day, and I buy some alts every week now. It's very simple. I, I sign up for Coinbase 1. I think it's 30 bucks, and you waive all the fees. People will tell me all the time about how, well, you can get less fees on Coinbase Pro and da da da. And I'm like, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy to log in every single day and buy things and do all that stuff. I'm just not. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to pay a little bit extra because I just got other stuff to do. And that's it. All right. So, everybody, that's it for today. Almost, almost 50 minutes. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Not that YouTube is going to notify you, but sometimes they do. You get lucky. But that's it. So thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Adios.